Good morning, church. My name is Zach Landis, and I'm the pastor here, and I want to welcome you to University United Methodist Church on this beautiful Transfiguration Sunday as, uh, as things are changing around us and the ice is melting, and we are able to gather here uh, and be together as a church family. I do have a few announcements I want to let you know about, about things that are happening in, happening in the life of the church. Uh, first, on the back page of your bulletin, there's our schedule for the week. And so you'll see our regular events like Simple Cross and Over Easy Theology are happening as well as our Cornerstone uh, Cafe, which the weather looks good enough that everything should happen this week, finally. Uh, we've been having some, a weird February thus far. Um, but some highlights. I want to highlight the Women's Dinner Church, which is going to be on Monday at 6 p.m. in the Rose Room. We also have a uh, the Kids Choir rehearsal this week. Uh, this week at 6.30, so it's going to be partway through Cornerstone. And then after Cornerstone, we're going to have a, a, a brief Ash Wednesday service here in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. So you can come to that if you want. It, it'll be quick. It might be just about 30 minutes, but we're going to do the imposition of the ashes uh, and, a, and a brief worship service to kick off our Lenten journey. I also want to highlight the, the mission event that's on the inside cover of your bulletin. It's the Kids Against Hunger. That is a partnership that all of the Methodist churches in Wichita Falls and the district office. The district office is actually the, the one that is um, uh, spearheading this, uh, this event. And so it's packing, for, um, packing food packets for kids that are at the... Uh, House of Hope in uh, Puerto Lampira, Honduras. And so it's a, mes a Methodist, it's the only Methodist outreach on the entire eastern side of Honduras. And so it is a, uh, a key thing that's providing meals. And um, Todd sent out an email, or DS sent out an email wanting to remind, uh, remind us to remind everybody that anybody, all ages and abilities, can do this because it's literally like somebody holds up open a bag and like you. One person, if you can scoop a little scoop of rice into a bag, you are able to do this mission event. There's no hard, uh, heavy lifting or any hard jobs. It's easy and anybody can do it. There is a code there to do a, a sign up genius. If you want to sign up for a time, they're doing two hour time slots. Um, if you need help doing that, call the office and Loy will sign you up for you and sign up your time. Or if you want the code sent to you in a text message or email, let me or Lloyd know and we can do that as well. Also, you won't get turned away if you just show up, okay? So you can also just show up that day and help out as well. Um, but are there any other announcements that I may have overlooked? I know that was a lot of information. Anything I've overlooked? All right, if not, or... Oh, yes. I don't, Laura didn't make it because Hannah's tummy was hurting this morning. But it is Laura's birthday tomorrow. So make sure you. Oh, you guys. <laughs> oh, it's your birthday again. Yeah. So what am I supposed to do here? Am I supposed to sing happy birthday to you every time? It's your birthday? All right, fine. This is it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. All right? God. Can Kat just get some sleep around here? <laughs> Laura, Laura will be so sad she missed that. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for that. And, uh, and also, just w make sure you wish Laura a happy birthday. It's tomorrow on the 28th. So. Any others? If not, let us uh, stand if it's comfortable for you to do so as we sing our opening hymn, which is Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. We'll be singing verses 1, 2, and 3.
join with me in our responsive call to worship. Lord, you have called us to the mountaintop. Help us to listen carefully to the words of your healing love. Place your trust in the Lord in all your ways. Our second hymn is Holy Ground. Out of the faith we sing, we'll be singing it through twice. They go up to a mountaintop, 
And when they are up there, Jesus is transfigured. And what that means is that his, all his clothes became dazzling white, like it's shining, bright and shiny. And his face just had this light, and then, like, light coming out of it, right? And then with Jesus, suddenly Moses and Elijah appear. And, and the disciples, it's just kind of this awe-inspiring moment where all of this wonderful things are happening. And they, and they realize that Jesus definitely is God's son. It's this holy moment, right? And, and one funny thing is that Peter wants to go and make basically what are little tents. He wants little, makes little houses, for Je one for Jesus, one for Elijah, and one for Moses. Because he just wants to stay there forever, right? Because he says, this is just such an incredible moment. Have you ever had a moment that you just didn't ever want to end? No? What was that? Summer. summer. You just wish <laughs> summer was forever? Yeah? What about you guys? Uh, winter. Winter? You wish winter would last forever? What about you? When you stay the night with Gabby, yeah, you wish you could do that. She's my cousin. She's my cousin. Okay. Yeah. But that's kind of, oh, what, what about you? Spring? Yeah, spring's a good time. Yeah. But like, any, is there any other time when you've had all your family together? You know, when I was a kid, I wish Christmas morning just never stopped. Me too. Like, there just was, underneath the tree were just like, you took one present and another one would magically appear, right? I know. That's kind of the moment that they're having. They're, they don't want that moment to end. But Jesus says, you know what? We do have to go back down this mountaintop, right? Because he has work to do, right? He has more things to teach us and to show us how, how to live. But before that ends, a voice from heaven, who do you think that is? God, right? A voice from heaven says, this is my son. And he says, listen to him. Right? And then they go back down that mountain and continue on the ministry. So what do you think we're supposed to do? Listen to Jesus, right? So just what God said, listen to Jesus. So that's kind of our job is to realize who Jesus is, but then also to listen to everything he teaches us, right? Do you think you can do that? There's a lot of things he tells us to do. A lot of things that you guys are learning about what Jesus taught us. But that's what we're supposed to do is listen to Jesus. Okay? When well, you guys go back to school this week, that's what I want you guys to focus on. Okay? I need to focus on going to school. Well, focus on what Jesus would have you. Think about like if a teacher puts an assignment down in front of you, what would Jesus want me to do? Right? Yeah. Everything, every opportunity, you think, what would Jesus want me to do? Right? And if you guys can do that, you'll be living a great life. Okay? Let's have a prayer before we go and sit down, okay? And I'll say a line, and I want you guys to repeat it, okay? Good morning, God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for teaching us. Help each of us live the way you want us to live. Amen. All right, guys, thank you for coming down. I now want to uh, draw you into our time of prayer today. I do want to uh, make some highlights of things. So, of course, our prayer list that's on the back page of your bulletin. We need to be. Uh, we want to pray for all of those who have asked to be in our prayers. And just a, a note: uh, if you have any uh, additions uh, that you want to have added to that list, just let us know about that uh, in the church office. Um, we also want to be in prayer for uh, Hannah. Hannah's not feeling good this morning, so just prayer for her and. Also, a prayer of joy for uh, Laura's birthday uh, tomorrow. I know that she'll, she would be embarrassed if I said that, but since he's not here, I can do whatever I want to. Um, we're, we're also uh, probably, we need to be mindful of, of Ukraine and be praying for Ukraine and for uh, everything that is happening over there. Just, uh, and, and prayers for our nation, too, because as, as divided as our nation is, we're not all of one mind about what should be done. And so uh, prayers for our own nation because we have 
been often the nation that people look up to for leadership in the world. And we want to have a, a, a united uh, uh, way of dealing with that. So just uh, be in prayers for that whole situation because what's going on is not good in Ukraine. Uh, but are there any other joys or concerns that you'd like to have lifted up this morning? Uh, Rachel. Whose birthday? Whose? Your mom. Okay. Is on Wednesday. A birthday on Wednesday. Awesome. That is a joy. Any others? We need to remember Bruce and Carol Hale and their family. Yes. Bruce. Yes. Yeah, so Bruce and Carol Hale uh, for the death of their, their mom and uh, uh, whose life we celebrated yesterday here uh, for Mary Hale. Yes. Was that what you were going to say? Uh, Wayne turned 70 yesterday. Okay. <laughs> Happy birthday, Wayne. Happy birthday yesterday. Any others? Yes. Oh, you do have a birthday tomorrow, too. Well, happy birthday. Do you have another one, Gabby? Now you're six. You've had your birthday. I went to her birthday party. Yes, you. And it was I, a couple weeks ago. I was sick during it. I think that. I was sick on November fourth. Okay. Good for celebration of the birthdays. Any others? All right. If not, let us join our hearts and our minds together and go to the Lord in prayer. And I will lead us through a time of pastoral prayer. But let us all, at the end, close with the Lord's prayer together. But let us all go to God in prayer. O oh God of all life, we picture the mountaintop experience of the disciples, Peter, James, and John, those who were the chosen to go up to that mountaintop with Jesus and to receive this new vision. And we would like to think about what it would have been like to be there to you. But it wasn't what we would expect. For they were awed and frightened all at the same time. They didn't know what to do or how to respond. Peter wanted to build a special festival booth for Moses and for Elijah and for Jesus. Where people could come and receive blessings and healings. It would have just been so awesome to stay up on that mountaintop forever. But it would have been easier to do that than descending back down again to the hungry valley below. But we too would like to stay up on those mountaintop experiences. But Jesus still has work for us to do. We are called not just to receive blessings, not just for ourselves alone, but also to share blessings with others. We are called to extend Offers of healing, mercy, forgiveness, compassion, and hope to others. We are called to be peacemakers in all circumstances. But all of these things are difficult for us to do in the face of anger and the hostilities that our world often has. So remind us, O oh God, that we are not alone. 
for you are always with us. And just as we have asked for healing mercies for those that we have lifted up, we know that we too are recipients of your grace and your power, your strength and your love. So help us to feel that power flooding over our lives and give us the strength and hope that we need to always abide in you, O God, and to face coming down from those mountaintops down into the everyday lives around us. And be with those who we have lifted in prayer this day, and we lift this prayer up to you in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture passage today comes from the Gospel according to Luke. I'll be reading from chapter 9, verses 28 through 36. This is the story of Jesus' transfiguration. 
Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking about his departure, which, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud a voice uh, came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent in those days and told no one any of the things that they had seen. May God add a blessing to the reading, he hearing, and understanding of Scripture. Would you pray with me? Lord, take my lips and speak through them. And take our ears and open them so we may hear your word for us. And take our hearts and our lives and fill them with your love. And guide us so that we may be faithful servants granted in both your word and love. Amen. So today we are looking at the story of Jesus' transfiguration. And for Peter, James, and John, the, those chosen inner circle of disciples that went up to the mountaintop with Jesus, it was truly one of those mountaintop experiences, right? One of those awe-inspiring moments that you feel, feel just close and connected with God, right? Has anybody else had a mountaintop experience in their life? I mean, I think this might be where that saying comes from, but it's just this, this moment that you don't want to end, right? That you just feel close to God. It's an amazing, awe-inspiring moment. Now, all throughout the Bible, God has chosen these mountaintop experiences to interact with his chosen people time and time again, right? Abraham went up on a mountain with his son Isaac to show his true devotion to God. Moses went up on top of a mountain to commune with God and, as we know, receive the Ten Commandments. Jesus has taught from the side of a mountain before about how to this new way of life that God is calling them to live. You see, these moments that happen in the Bible, they still happen today. We still have mountaintop experiences where we, we have these moments of connection with God, where these moments that we don't want to have them happen or to, to have them end, right? Martin Luther King Jr. also had uh, in his famous I've Been to the Mountaintop speech, he talked about uh, on the night before he was assassinated about how he had been to the mountaintop and how he had seen the glory of the Lord and he was no longer afraid, right? I've even had a few mountaintop experiences in my own life. My own call to ministry story uh, kind of ignited on, on a, a mountaintop in, in Tennessee. We have these moments, right? These mountaintop moments happen. And this is what's happening in our story with Jesus and with Peter, James, and John. It's a mountaintop experience, right? It's a moment of closeness with God. It's a connection. And, and while they were up on the mountain, this is where Jesus is, is transfigured, right? It's where his appearance changes, where his clothes become dazzling white. It's a moment of awe because also Moses there who represents the law of, of all the Jewish people. And then also Elijah who represents the prophets. It's the, it's the law and the prophets and Jesus all coming together. It's a moment where they're all in glory, and it's a truly amazing and awe-inspiring moment. And as far as mountaintop experiences go, this would probably be at the top of, of all of them, right? If any of us had been there, we would have been truly awe-inspired. 
But even though this was truly an awesome mountaintop experience, the disciples weren't, weren't quite all there. They didn't quite get what was understanding, right? The scripture tells us that they were weighed down by sleep. That they were tired. It's the same sleepiness that the same three disciples, Jake, Peter, James, and John, had in the Garden of Gethsemane when Peter or when Jesus is praying on the night that he's arrested. It's that same just not fully being there with Jesus. It seems like Peter, James, and John are just always falling asleep at the key times, right? But even when Peter kind of, it's kind of, some translations said that when they became more awake and realized what was happening, it says that, that Peter makes a fool of himself, almost, kind of. He says, let's make these tents, let's make these dwellings, one for you, Jesus, one for Elijah, and one for Moses. And he, he's kind of freaking out, right? But Peter, he wanted to stay there in that moment forever. That's what he's really trying to do. He's trying to erect these festival, festival booths up. And they say, let's just stay right here. Jesus, this is awesome, right? And we can, we can bring people here. We can charge a mission. We can just bring people here. And this will be just amazing, right? But you see, he didn't want to, that moment to end. And really, I can't blame him. If I was up there on that mountaintop with Jesus... And Moses and Elijah appear in glory, I probably would be doing the same thing. But you see, Peter and James and John, they were kind of missing the point. And sometimes we miss the point too. You see, Jesus didn't come into our world to come up to that mountaintop and just, and just have that moment with Moses and Elijah and, and just to stay there forever, right? Or to prove that he's God's son or to be uh, in glory, right? Jesus didn't come for that. And thank God Jesus didn't come for that. But what Jesus really came to do was to show us who he is. This moment on the mountaintop where Jesus is transfigured and Peter, James, and John see this, that they kind of understand that who Jesus is. It's one of those moments where, they, where they're getting to know who Jesus is. That he's God's son, the chosen one, the anointed one. But he came more for just than just that, right? He also came to show us how to live. How we're supposed to love one another. And thank goodness he came to come back down that mountain. Because Jesus left that mountaintop. He left that mountaintop experience. That wonderful moment with other key figures in the faith history. And he came back down from that mountaintop into the mess of our world. And really into the mess that our lives are. And he came to save us. He could have just done whatever he wanted to do. And probably Jesus was well within his power to stay up on that mountaintop forever. But he came back down. For our sake. So when I think about this moment, this moment where Jesus is transfigured, I, I kind of wonder sometimes if we sometimes miss the point too, right? If we're maybe more like Peter, James, and John than we'd like to admit. I think that we would like to think that we are close with Jesus, right? Because Peter, James, and John, they were the inner circle of the disciples. They were the closest three that should have known what was happening. But oftentimes they, they miss the point. They, they, they don't realize what the big picture is about Jesus' ministry and what he's going to accomplish is. And sometimes I think we, too, also miss the point. And especially from the events in our world of this past, uh, this past week, we have for sure missed the point on how we are supposed to love one another in this world. Because it's one thing to profess faith in Jesus Christ, to claim that you're a Christian, to claim that you're following Jesus, to come to church once. One hour a week, right? 
It's one thing to do that, but it's an entirely different thing to actually be somebody who follows Jesus, who listens to Jesus, and who lives out their faith life each and every moment of their lives. You see, at the end of this passage, God's voice comes from heaven and says, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. And that, my friends, is exactly what we are supposed to do. As people who have confessed that Jesus is our Lord and our Savior, as people who have said that we are disciples, that is what we are supposed to do. We're supposed to listen to Jesus. We're supposed to follow him in the way that he showed us how to live. But sometimes I wonder if we are really listening to Jesus. Or if we're listening to other voices in the world. Sometimes I wonder if, if we, like Peter, James, and John, are drowsy and falling asleep to things that are happening around us. And we don't know what's happening. I wonder if we would rather stay in our, the comfort zones of our lives. Those mountaintop experiences rather than following Jesus back down the mountain into the hard places. That ministry really calls us to go. You see, I think there are times in our lives where we do miss the point. When we listen to people who are not Jesus, who live in ways that are counter to the gospel, and we follow them rather than following Jesus. I think there's times when we fall asleep to the injustices of our world to the evil being done around our world, but because we're kind of comfortable in our comfort zones, we just, or because it doesn't affect us, it really doesn't hurt our heart, but it should. You see, sometimes we'd rather just stay in those comfortable places to listen to the people on the TV or wherever it is that say those things that just, that align with what we really want or our comfort zones, right? Rather than hearing some hard truths, rather than following those hard lessons that Jesus has for us. Because sometimes being a disciple means going completely against what the, the world or what culture is saying. But we follow what Jesus says. So as we kind of close and I wrap up this, this talk, this is the main point. This is the main thing, right? Jesus came into our world not just to save us in the end through grace and forgiveness so that we could just keep failing, right? And going, oh, forgive me again, forgive me again, forgive me again, right? It's not all, we do believe that grace and forgiveness are always there for us, but it's not an excuse to just live however we want to, right? What Jesus really came to do was to totally transform our lives. So that we're no longer living the old lives that we used to live back before we didn't know who Jesus was. But what we need to do now is not just profess faith in Jesus and then going on however we want to live. But what we need to do is actually listen to Jesus and allow him to transform our lives. We need to remember also that Jesus came down from that mountaintop, right? To come down into the mess that, that the, of our world, right? To do the hard work that was set before him. So when we're asked to wake up, to, to get out of our, our comfort zones or get out of our drowsiness to the injustices and the evil that is all too present in this world, we need to remember that as baptized Christians, it's our job to resist that. To resist evil and injustice. We are asked to come out of our comfort zones, to come down from those mountaintop experiences, and to do what God has placed before us. Which is continuing the work that Jesus started. 
Because, my friends, we can't just claim to be Christians. We can't just have a, a little cross on our lapel or a wear a cross necklace and just say, I'm a Christian, right? To be a Christian, you actually have to listen to Jesus and follow him. And your life has to resemble his life. We can't stay up on those mountaintops either, right? It would be great to stay up on that mountaintop, right? I probably would still be there. But you see, Peter, James, and John, they followed Jesus back down. They came down from the mountaintop, and thank God they did. Because they came and changed the world. And my, friend, that, my friends, that ongoing transformation of the world, that's the work that is set before us. So may we go about doing that work of transforming lives, and transforming the world around us. And may we also all listen to Jesus. Because Jesus is God's own son. The chosen one. And may we all continually be transformed. So that we can make this world look more like the kingdom of God. May we go about that work. Today, tomorrow, and every single day of our lives. Amen. And my friends, our time in worship is coming to a close, but I would not want to end our time together without making an invitation to Christian discipleship. If you are somewhere along your faith journey, and you are coming to a point of commitment, whether you have not, you've not made that commitment, you've not professed faith in Christ yet, and you are coming to that moment of, of baptism and profession of faith, I would love to pray with you and talk with you about that. My door is always open. You can come talk with me after church about that pull that God has placed on your life. Also, if, you're, if you are a Christian, if you're a member of another church or you just want to uh, become a member here, you are welcome to do that. You can come forward during our last hymn and join uh, in front of the crowd. Also, you can come to me after church and join in a more private setting as well. Uh, but my friends, that invitation is there uh, for you to respond to if you feel called by God uh, to one of those things. But let us all stand and sing our closing hymn, which is Take the Time to Be Holy. We will sing verses 1, 2, and 3. <laughs>
and go out with the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.